Hi, and welcome to this new video on how to use CSV files in your LaTeX documents. So the goal of this video is to take in a CSV file and create tables like the two you see here. So before we start, let's quickly go through what a CSV file is. So a CSV file stands for comma separated values and an example you can see here. So a CSV file is simply a text file containing a lot of values, for instance here, countries and land area and population, and the values are separated typically with a comma. CSV files have the ending CSV and is often used in the interplay between different kinds of programs, for instance, Python and LaTeX. So we have some data, and the first thing we want to do is to take this data in this CSV file and just make a table out of it. And this is very simple to do with the CSV simple package. So first of all, we need to import the package, which is going to be use package, and then CSV simple. And we also need to take in the optional argument L3 for LaTeX free. Okay, so let's run and see that I've written it correctly. And we see that nothing happens in our document. So let's go down here and make the table. And what I want to do is to create a simple table using this country CSV file. So if you want something quick and dirty, you can use the CSV auto tabular. So you write a function CSV auto tabular, and it's going to make a table with your CSV file. And then you take in the CSV files in question, which is countries.csv. So let's run this cell here. And what we see is that we have now created a very simple table with the headers being the headers in our CSV file. So country, land area, and population. And the data is the same as represented in the CSV file. So this CSV auto tabular did not offer a lot of control. So let's say that I did not want this horizontal line here, or I wanted two horizontal lines here or whatnot. This CSV auto tabular will not create this for us. So it's a very simple function. So if you want to tinker more with your table, then we need to use another function. The prime function in the CSV simple library is the CSV reader. So the CSV reader can do a lot of different things, among which is to create tables. So let's use CSV reader. And here we will have some optional argument, and then we will have the CSV file. In the next one, we have the naming of the different columns, so we can make custom names. And in the final one, we are going to put in what we actually want to write out. So let's start with giving in the file, which is going to be grade.csv. So if I run now, nothing should happen because we have not said anything about how we want to print it out. So if we want to create the table, we need to have some formatting things here, among which is how many columns we want to include in our table. So let's go to the grades.csv and here we see a CSV file containing name, exercise set, so three different exercise sets, and one mock exam and one final exam. So let's just imagine that you have some program which gives you out the name and how the students have done in the semester. So I'm actually only interested in some of the columns here. I'm interested in the name. And I want to create a table with only the mock exam and the final exam. So I want to ignore everything here in the middle. So in the end, I only want three columns in my table. So to create this, we can write tabular equal, and then we would use the same notation as we do in the table environment. So C, for instance, for centered columns, R for right centered columns, and L for left centered columns. And let's just take a horizontal line between everything. Okay, so let's have this set up here and let's just move to the last one where we actually write in the code. In this case, I want the name, which is the first column. And what we can write is then CSV call 
for a CSV column, and then the number of the column in Roman numerals. So CSV column I will be the first column in the CSV file, which you can go back here, which you see correspond to the name here. And the next column is going to be the mock exam. So let's go back here. The mock exam is one, two, three, four, five. So we can write CSV call and then the Roman numeral for five, which is V. And the final one, which is the final exam, is going to be CSV call and then the Roman numeral for six, which is VI, if I'm not mistaken. So now we can compile this document. So what we get out is the names, the mock exam and the final exam grades, but we still do not have a header for the table here. So first of all, I just want some more space. So V space one centimeter to just see the different columns more clearly. So now I want to create a custom table header and this do not have to correspond to what is written in the CSV file. So what I can write is table head equals, and then the first one can be like first name. The second one can be mock exam. And the final one can be final. So if we now try to run this, so I forgot the comma here and also I forgot the double line here to end the line and jump to the next one. So if I now compile the document, we see that we have a header. So if our goal is to create this one here, we see that we are missing some horizontal lines. So let's have some more horizontal lines here, for example, if I make a H line here and compile, you see that we have a line here on the top. And if I also have an H line here at the end, so we see that we have now a horizontal line both before and after the header. So if we want a horizontal line after Stina and after Eirik to kind of separate it, we could try to add an H line here but as we will see, this will not work and get us errors. And the same thing happens if we try to have a new line here. So now the entire thing looks wrong. So the way to actually get a horizontal line after each column is to use the option late after line here. So after the line, we want a double backslash and then a horizontal line. So if we now run the code, we end up with horizontal lines after every row. So now you might be wondering, can't we just use CSV auto tabular? Often you can do just that, but there are some nice things which works with CSV reader, which does not work with CSV auto tabular. For instance, if we want the final exam to be in bold face, we can simply write text bf like this and run this out and now the final exam is in boldface and you can do similar things for instance you can write grade here and if we run it you have changed what is written in the final column so if you want to program to count the rows you can also use the the csv row so what I mean is that I can write the CSV row and then I will also need another column here. So let's just center it. And if I now compile, so you see that the first name here was put in the first row. So let's also fix that one and just have an empty first column here. And now you are counting the rows from one here. So this was everything I wanted to say in this video. In the next video on the simple CSV package, we are going to go through how we can use the CSV file to create multiple documents. For instance, we can create bills where we get the data from a CSV file and we create several different bills to several different people using the simple CSV package. So see you again in the next video.